Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tierno, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Nationalist Ukraine lover, but we gotta talk about divided devotions. It was another dreary, overcast Ukrainian day as Klaichkivsky and Mikhailo David stood atop a hill, watching the soldiers drove below. Men who would soon be on the front lines, fighting and dying for the liberation of the nation, as was their duty. Both men observed their lines of soldiers, raised their rifles, aim, and fired targets on the range before rotating for another line to take their place. There were a few shots I missed, and those who failed immediately received an earful from the commanding officer, but Kyachkivsky noted that most of the soldiers were hitting their targets, some of them with impressive precision. Kyachkivsky smiled grimly. They are improving. They are, Medved agreed. Lips pursed as he paused for a moment, as if considering what to say next. That could be cause for some concern. Kyachkivsky raised an eyebrow, turning to a subordinate. Explain. Some of the units are no longer reporting to me alone, especially ones recently formed. He answered slowly. Calmly. I want to confirm this before I brought it to you, but I'm certain now. Some of these officers are also reporting to Maevsky. I don't need to tell you the concern I have. No, he did not. Maevsky was an associate of Stetsko and Shukhevich, especially of late. That this was taking place was disappointing. He expected perhaps, but disappointing all the same. He wondered what both men were thinking. Perhaps they believed him a blind, foolish old man. They would realize their errors in time. Keep a close watch on him, he instructed Medved, and do not hesitate to remind me. Uh, the men whom their loyalty is owed. There could be not conflicting loyalties if Ukraine was to be liberated. You know, blood and soil, of course, but we got still some time here. Ah, yes. Did you hear this one last time? I probably did, but let there be no one that claims that we've given diplomacy a chance. Many times. We reminded the illegal occupiers to whom the soil they truly, they toil, truly belonged. The crown of their stay upon our legitimate territory, and as long as they are left with their corruptive elements of people, we would be willing to let bygones be bygones. Their time would become would come not by us bar or our hand, as long as they stopped sliding us. But they, so they still stay, breeding like rabbits, and spoiling and twisting our history with their mere breath, taunting us by their mere stubbornness and disregard for our warnings. If they love our territory so much, let their blood and bodies be the fertilizer of the next generation of Ukrainians, claim the land they rightfully deserve. Uh, a nationalistic commissariat. As the national struggle continues, we must remain focused on our ultimate goal, victory, and on what uh, is needed in order to attain it. One such need is dedication, morale, commitment, and that we must realize that Shukhevich, uh, uh, while corrected by the criticality of peasants forming the backbone of the struggle, is not appreciating their other, less desirable qualities. We must have men who will not be easily confused or led astray, and, in what, and that we must accept that recruitment must be con concentrated among men who can enforce Bandera's teachings. In this, we will have dedicated soldiers and no issues of morale. We got like one day left, but uh, this one's important to do, as well as that one. Ah, I like more of that too. Alessandri? Uh, of oh, Chile, huh? Alright, whatever. I'm going with 67%. Oh, now it's August. Happy uh, oh, August, everybody. Nice. All traitors receive their doom. Although no one argued that, that the Republicans, decadent and bloated as they are, are not a threat to the state, Setsko focuses all too much upon them, somehow just seeing their weakness as a strength. In doing so, however, he misses the true threat, the Melnik Jews, who line their pockets through German collaboration for years. These traitors cannot be excused, and we will not make the same mistake as Setsko. We'll identify the ones to make examples of, and for the rest, we will ensure they know their days are numbered. The Candyman. Ah, Thorakheim's heart beat a little faster when his doctor came home one day with a handful of sweets and a bright smile on his face. He'd heard some rumors and was afraid he knew what that meant. He quickly called his daughter over. Larissa, he said, his voice calm. Who did you get those from? Oh, Bronislav, she said brightly, holding out one of the candies to him. He's very nice. He patrols where we play and brings us treats. Do you want one? This man, he says, ignoring the offer. Does he say who he works for? I don't think so, she said. I think he, he said that he'll just make nothing bad happen, make sure nothing bad happens to us. Our voice lord conspiratorially. He doesn't say he, does, he likes. He doesn't like the Germans. He says he doesn't like them. Thorakheim exhaled. He knew who that man was and knew who they, that they were back. If things worse, then that might, they might have to leave. Larissa, uh, he said, look quietly. Listen to me carefully. Stay away from that man. He's dangerous to us. You look confused. What did he do? It worked for some bad men, he answered. Men who would hurt us because of who we are. You remember Uncle Okolov? He and his family were killed by that group. That man works for him. She certainly went still. The truth about her uncle's death unknown before now. The sweets were forgotten and her voice was small. Why? 
Because your mother is Polish, she, he said gently. They hate Poles and anyone related to them. Promise me that you'll stay away from him. You aren't safe around him. She swallowed, but nodded sharply. I promise. Well, I don't. I'm going to do it anyways. 16%, 72%, 74. Eh, you know, I'm still good with 74, 72. That's actually pretty good overall. 16 is not good enough, but we'll get there. 60% is good. That's too much control for the Germans. Ugh. And then, uh, we were born in a great hour. The Reich's Commissariat, that abomination of the German bastards, built to oppress good Ukrainian sons. At the last collapsing under the weakness of the feckless cock and his degenerate ministers. It is clear now the news of the old son of a whore in Germania dying better than no, uh, that no better opportunity exists for us to liberate our great Ukraine. Don't mind me, we're just going to get through this stuff really quickly. And yeah, more worse, but why not? We were born in a great hour, an hour of valiant resistance and combat for the freedom of Ukraine. Though we met with defeat time and again at the hands of the Moscow's Germans and Poles, we bled them whites and remained able to fight every time they thought they had won. We are the warriors born to free our beloved Ukraine, and under the vows we are certain to obtain victory, to purify and liberate the Ukrainian state. O Bandera, our father and liberator, look upon uh, our fight with pride. By God, we swear that Ukraine shall be free once more and built in the way you envisioned. Absolutely. Alright, so all this is ahead of time. So we're actually caught up for the most part here. Uh, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that too. 40 pieces of silver. The man Kola had been but a boy when the world had changed, when his country had fallen under new German management. As we're going to quickly do this too. There you go. In many years since he had seen the rewards that those who accept the change could earn, land, wealth, and influence over their fellow townspeople, he had similarly seen the punishments given to those who did not, and there were always a few of them swing, singing or swinging softly in the town square, each and every one of them whom had thought they would be the liberator. As he had grown older, the man had therefore chosen the path of reward over the path of punishment. Well, more than just one of his old friends had swung from bar in the square, he had gained a nice house, a beautiful wife and family, for a land of till and a senior position in the local native administration besides. Life had been kind to him, or as kind as it was possible to be in Ukraine, indeed. So when he returned home that day, having just helped organize yet another uh, the endless searches for contraband and partisan sympathizers, exhaustion turned to elation at the wide smiles of his wife and daughter. It had been hard at work, and his uh, wife knew he needed cheering up, and in the large kitchen he saw her attempt on the table, a large gift that had been received in the mail, no doubt from the local government commandery. Exchanging a kiss, he smiled against the open it, wondering what reward awaited him. The explosion destroyed the house entirely, and when investigators found what they thought were his charred remains, they recovered eight, eighty large nails from it. Of his wife and daughter, no trace was found. No one spoke of the event, of course. There were too many ears around, but the next morning, an empty news appeared on the town gallows. The message had been sent. Clearly, eighty nails instead of forty pieces. Still after the storm. The gathering may have seemed from the outside like it was any other. Shukhevich did not portray as anything else, as was the intention. He could tell that people who had gathered weren't fully sure why they were here. He wondered if he should feel some doubts, hesitations, or fears. He felt none of those. There, came, there came a time to make choices, and he had been accepting of how things were going for too long. He had been passive. He had been servile in the name of an ideal that was revealed to be an illusion no longer. There would be no hesitation about what must be done, but he couldn't do it alone. Cook, Orboivi, Pozichanuk, Oloshin, all these men who were ones he could trust his life with. He was doing so once again by placing it into their hands. If he was wrong, then so be it. If he was right, then there could still be hope for Ukraine. He waited only a little longer and then began speaking. Klyachkivsky has failed us, he said flatly, gauging the reactions. A few eyes widened and saffled spines, but none of them seemed surprised. He had failed the UPA. He has failed to embody Bandera's vision. He has failed Ukraine, and he will bring it to ruin if it remains in power. I would not allow him to ruin all we have worked towards. Exiled his voice steel. I intend to deal with Klyachkivsky at the earliest opportunity, and I will not succeed without your support. That's what I ask from you tonight. You are good men, and I will need such men for what is to come. What do you say? This is a brief pause, but not to wait long for an answer. Bozichanyuk glanced between the gathered men, nodded, and turned to face Shukhevsk. Uh, uh, and his eyes resolved, and his voice firm, we're with you, Shukhevsk, to the end. Am I saying his name wrong? I'm, my god, there's just so much you gotta read. And I'm losing it right now, apparently. Just straight up losing it. What a fail. The time for action was approaching and war limited on the horizon. Everyone had gathered on a dark Ukrainian night. His allies painstakingly close in. Maivsky's trust had been prepared. There had been much talk, planning, and conspiracy over the recent weeks. But as the war approached, now was the time to bring all of them together. Around a table upon which arrested maps, lamps, and mugs. There would, this would be a long night. But what comes only the first step. Stetsko began. And we must not be under any illusions as to what we face. 
Should we crush the Germans, scatter the Republicans, and exterminate the Communists, this will not be the end. Germany will not tolerate losing one of their most critical colonies. Ooh, 34, 34, okay. We're getting there. There were nods around the room as he acknowledges uncomfortable truth. Freedom requires a miracle, and this miracle will come through blood, sacrifice, and steel. A miracle will come by learning the lessons of the past and not succumbing to the same weaknesses and degeneracy that doomed us once before. His smile was cold, shadowed in the overhead light. Melnik's weakness led to the conquest of Ukraine. His restraint, his tolerance, and corruption, they made Ukraine soft. We are not men of such weakness. Yes, we will need a miracle to live free, but we are strong enough to forge this miracle on our own. There cannot be room for doubts, as the path must be taken. He rested one finger on the maps, on one of the maps of Ukraine. His voice clear with challenge as he looked into the eyes of those present. If there are any though who are unwilling to do what is necessary, then leave. From this point on, there is no turning back. Not a single man moving, and Stetsko smiled. Good. Let us begin. Thirty-eight percent. Oh, happy October, everybody! It's still above sixty-six, so I'm good with that. Thirty-eight. So far, we can get with that. Because it's now October, and you know, things are going to happen on October. Paradise in flames. Hmm. We are born at a great hour. Is this not what we have been waiting for? It had grown to be discussing regularity for Stetsko and Shukevich. Before every engagement, Klaichevsky placed it upon himself to arouse the army in Stetsko and Shukevich. At the displeasure of sitting alongside him, watching the soldiers grow more and more excited, agitated, and awed, nothing could prove more aggravating. We now take a pump, arms with the hope that the German might scamper away on sight, never. The pulling of the trigger, that is the act that saves Ukraine, to spell German's blood. It's to remind his race of the, that their exploitation of Ukraine was a deadly error. When we meet the Germans tomorrow and inflict that pain a thousand times over, we tell them that the message is so loud that they cannot help but hear us. We were born at the perfect hour to teach such a lesson. The crowd erupted into frenetic applause. Shukevich and Stetsko stood with the rest of the crowd, a controlled rise in the sea of men jumping from their seats. The smiles were soft and measured, the legs locked, their eyes narrowed upon Klyachkiski. The mechanical motions only faintly hit their attempt to read the man who led this crowd, but if anyone noticed, no one cared. All I could think was about was the battle to come, the day ahead, and the war that would someday be won. Their minds hummed, not with the thoughts of tactics or ideology, not even of the battlefield. All I could think of was the glory of victory and how soon it might come to them all. Blindly, they run towards the, new, the mall of the German beast. Seventy percent is not bad. Sixty-five percent is not good enough. Ugh. Forty-one percent here, though. That's not bad, though. And hope you like a little bit of lag with the German Civil War. Yay. Nice job, Nixon. That's what I would have done too. How about that st more support? Nice, things are falling apart. Happy November, everybody. Europe's just merely falling apart, that's all. And that goes Austin above us. Absolute control. Oh, well, I guess almost absolute control at this point. Ah, good. Oh, that is so flippin' close, it's not funny. 70% is good. Uh, complication denied. Yeah, if you want to do this, please go ahead. Bro. A dumb bus blitz. Um, I think I heard some before too, so if you want to do this, please go ahead. Will they be answered? Oh, we got so close to having Kiev. Perfidious omens. 
They were gathered in an office that was not large enough for all of them. The atmosphere would be stifling for most of them, and Kliachkivsky knew that they were wondering why they were here, and trying hard to not let their apprehension show. He knew they knew he was watching closely. Myron Lenkovsky, Halasa, Lebed, Medved, officers who he was confident of their reliability were present and upon his orders. He watched them closely for any hint his presumptions were wrong, but after a few more moments, determined that nothing stood out. Each of you are here because of your dedication and loyalty to the Ukraine and the UPA. Kliachkevsky began, meeting each of their eyes as he paced. You are the, those whom can be completely trusted, and with this comes expectations and responsibilities. You can trust, I, you I can trust, and there are others who are less reliable. He paused his pacing. One corner of his lip curled up. While I wish for otherwise, it is necessary that each of you be watching for those who speak of treason or intend to betray us. If such behavior is noticed, you will be reporting it to me immediately. There were sharp nods of that as the officers hung on his words, careful not to miss a single syllable. At last, I opened his mouth to ask a question all of them had. Are there any in particular you, wish, you, you would say are unreliable? Kliachkivsky smiled, be aware of Stesko Shukhevich and those who surround him, but as I said, only observe and report to me. It is not prudent to kick the hornet's nest until at this point. Not until we are certain, not until we are ready. He took a seat, and his message to be delivered. Uh, dismiss, do not be dis do not disappoint your advised. A ruthless calculation. We gonna do this, please go ahead. Boom. Oh, they got two more infantry divisions, huh? They're sending against here. Send them against these guys. Train. Ah, oh, Poland free. It's free, though. Go a minute. Revolutionary Vengeance. Volinia was dead silent, at least to the rest of the country. Phone lines, radio signals, or even foot messengers from command yielded no answers, blocked, jammed, or killed, respectively. Whereas within Volinia, it couldn't be further from silence. For those few messengers who would, who would make it in in return, all they would report is the reign of chaos, fire, and war. The vengeful anger in the hearts of the people had reached a breaking point, and the cracking, straining region shattered like a broken glass, littering the streets of every city and town in Volinia. The police could not hold them for long. Even when they so hastily resorted to gunning down the rebels and riders that preceded the well-armed UPA's troops, emerging from the woodwork, furious and determined. Cities became battlegrounds, and morale broke under the pressure in an instant. Many of the Ukrainian police could not bear to fight their brothers, laying down arms and joining the national revolutionaries, those that could, re could retreat in terror or down on the pavement. As the refugees fled the horrors, messengers crawled back home. The command was able to piece together a sit rat. One that read that was too late. They scrambled troops in vain, but they could not breach a region that rejected them like a virus. Those that were lucky escaped, or at least found a shallow grave quickly. Volinia was falling, and as much as each of them tried to deny, the Rex Commissar and his men knew there was little they could do. Justice will be done. Alright, we'll see. Anyone about respite, please go ahead. As well as westward lines cut. There's Muscovine. Hobbs dashed. People of Ukraine, the revolution has begun. Oh, they actually pop up first. Yeah, deal with those guys first. Not us. Transnistria War, reconquered. Ah. The flames that had consumed Bolinia, when the vengeance and fervor of the Ukrainian people had wrestled it from the control of the ailing Reichskommissar, they finally settled to embers and left only the banners of the UPA ruling over the region. The administrators had been hanged or shot, the police had joined the ranks of the UPA or the dead, and the military began to scramble to meet a liberated Ukraine's expanding borders. Word spread into the mouths of the ref fleeing refugees, and with this spread for the chaos as dozens of towns burst into the same level of vicious infighting that Bolinia had. The beleaguered collaborationists were stretching thinner and thinner as the UPA advanced on Jetomir, and at that point, they could not resist. The battle was brief and bloody, revenge exacted on the defenders by rifle or blade, and the riders liberated are the same. A particularly bold advance had been made into Edibald colony, the UPA wasted no time doing what they deemed necessary, and just to the German settlers. All became targets when the regulars fell upon the land, and few who didn't flee in time remained alive. 
Those that escaped would stagger with a wounded back to government-controlled territory and tell their tales of terror and fields that were now empty and scorched. The region, save for the patrols, was as quiet as a grave it was. The same cannot be said that where the UPA territory ended. Fortifications were dug and barricades raised, as on the horizon could be seen the reaction of the government, sending in what few men they could spare from the chaotic mess that the rest of the country become. With control within Volinian, Zitomir established, and the UPA's expansion finally reaching an objective of resistance. It was clear the battle lines were being drawn, while pa long past first blood, the skirmishes along the lines did not bode well. It's inevitable now. Alright, so this is what we got to work with. And I like how we're in Poland as well right now, too. The third and final struggle. The end has begun. All that's left now is to be decided is whether we win or we die. Blood shall be spilt. And under the Bandera's legacy, either as victors or martyrs, no matter the cost, no matter the opponent, we have the will to fight for Ukraine. For the Bandera, for all Ukrainians persecuted, killed, raped, mutilated, treated as dirt, our struggle for freedom is coming to an end. One drenched in blood, Slava Ukraini. The spirited, drenched Domboy. Jesus Christ. Oh, we're definitely gonna need some guns. And I definitely want some artery here. Anti tank. Support. Uh, probably don't need that. Probably don't need that. You can get some of that too. Motorized. Yeah, that's fine, probably. That's probably all we're really gonna have. It's fine. So. That demons in the thicket, two Ukrainian divisions in Berlin, and power the peasantry. Weekly grain consumption goes down. I like that. This seems pretty good. I would like this one, but so if you don't need this one, please go ahead. Demons in the thicket. While it cannot be denied that we're in desperate needs of manpower, in desperate time, in desperate need of armed formations of any kind, we cannot allow that need to drive us into potentially catastrophic mistakes. We do not have that luxury. So it's with the question of arming the peasantry. What is true? We do. What that we that to do so would give us a much needed influx of militiamen. We cannot be assured of their loyalty on the national scale, and so they remain in the local defense areas. Our trained fighters might be spread increasingly thin, but at least they'll be reliable. They actually have support companies on them, which is actually not bad. Do we have any spare guns? We do have a few spare guns, actually. Yeah, we're just gonna do that immediately. I need you all to like spread out way more. And I need you to like stay here too. That's all I really need. I'm gonna leave this border open, which is probably a terrible idea. Also, if this doesn't go well, uh, we've got other ways of making sure that we do okay, because this is very tough to do up here. Because if we lose this area, we're completely screwed, so... And you always want to divert them. We, we need attack and defense. Now we have no political power, of course. Pretty normal. Uh, Oaken Ramparts. Cottages of Blood and Steel. Metallic Heart. Galicia's Industrial Veins. Free Production Use plus one. Plus one. Factory up by 15%. Spot consumption. Or do we want the guns? Well, honestly, I'd rather. Rivne is a metallic heart. For many years, Rivne functions as a black heart of the German administration, and while we may hate what it represented, we're going to afford to ignore our resource. For the old tractor factory complexes, they are still operating there, and they present a tremendous opportunity for us if we turn to the war effort. 
Repurposed vehicles converted from tractors to technicals would give us a significant advantage in the battles to come, especially against other regular forces. It would not be without a cost, but the rewards cannot be denied. Get Pinsk, good. I need you all to like focus here. Focus and just smash them. Just smash, 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 smash. I need you to hold as best you possibly can right now. Oh, and now what? Ah, Musk former Muscadine is now definitely former Muscadine. Good. Oh god, we got cut off, huh? When are you moving in there? Let's move. Sparks of the National Revolution, get in there. Uh, Kleochkivsky stood on the makeshift podium, a crowd surrounding him. He felt a pang of disappointment as so few people were there to witness him. Still, his speech isn't just for those who stand with him now, it's all for Ukraine and the scam's recording equipment hastily syllable for him. Every one that would resonate for decades to come. I come before you today to speak of the great struggle ahead. For too long, our beloved Ukraine has been under the oppressive rule of the Nazi invaders, but thanks to the valiant efforts of the UPA, we have finally been able to shake off the shackles and begin the reclamation of our own. But they make no mistake, our fight is far from over. The Germans, weakened though they may be, still threaten our continued freedom and independence. The liberals and communists, those who foster the weakness and depravity while cause our nation to fall, still have gripped the minds of many of our countrymen. And so we must prepare ourselves for the next stage of this war, a war of attrition, a war of survival. We must summon all of our strength, encourage and draw upon the great spirit of our people, for we are of superior stock. Descended from the great wars and heroes of our past, we have the will and determination to overcome any obstacle that stands in our way. And we must be ready to face our foes once more, take back what is rightfully ours, and crush their futile attempts at resistance. We must show them that we're not to be underestimated and that their threats or weapons will not scare us. We must be united in this fight, for it's only through our unity that we can help to emerge victorious, so let us stand together, brothers, and show the world that what it means to be Ukrainian. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the UPA. We have to have this area done now. I need you guys to stop attacking them. Good. Because right now, this front is going to fall apart like crazy. I need you to, like, extend yourself just down a bit more. There we go. I need you guys to go right there and do that. Encircle and destroy. Macedonian water, very nice. Good. Awesome. I thought we weren't going to actually be able to do that. Very good. Croatian winter, you know what? Go in. You're free to engage the enemy. How about the. No, you have no political power. Huh. What do you expect? We're doing okay. So, for now. Happy January, though. I'm not going to focus on this. Oh, so we're in a state. Oh, look at that. Going up by 16 a month. That's fantastic. So I did it so much. Algerian oh, Ward. Demons in the thicket. Yeah. As much as I like this, supply doesn't really help us out that much. Growth is okay. More factory output would be nice. Ah. Beautiful. Illustrious. Wunderbar. Uh, wonderful. We're not German here. See civilian stuff? Meh. Not worth it. Define innocence. 
What separates a guilty man from an innocent one in Ukraine? The innocent man holds injustices committed against our nation close to his heart, never once allowing his mind to wander into feelings of compromise or conciliation. He is steadfast in prosecuting the enemies of the people, staying his hand only when the last enemy of Ukraine lies dead at his feet. The guilty man, meanwhile, hardly requires introduction. He's an opportunist, a snake who sells out his countrymen out of cowardice, indifference, or even malice. Sadly, there are some amongst the ranks of the UPA who begin to see the guilty in a different light, sympathizing with a view that a select few of those who collaborate with Germany are not beyond salvation. This is a childish, fantastical notion of bad, so we must root it out before it is time to blossom. Treason is treason, after all, and the guilty will be punished while hesitation or remorse cause concern. I'll have you under this, please go ahead. It's about the running out of food. Yeah, that's pretty normal. You know what? You're both here. Help them out. How about you do your job and go there? Crap, we're done with the revolutionary inertia, that's not good. But honestly, we're doing alright right now. How much arty do we have? We have nothing, okay. That's pretty normal for us. They don't have very much either, so. I don't know, something that would be us. Yeah, don't go there. Uh, perdition for the guilty. The traitors who once lorded over their kinsmen like slave drivers now rot in musty, crowded cells awaiting the day of retribution. These worms are bastards to a man. Uh, each and every one condemned for putting their own interests as well as the interests of foreign invaders ahead of Ukraine is a heinous crime that can only be washed away with blood. Some of the men beg for clemency, uh, singing, uh, offering their services to the cause and singing hollow songs of their allegiance to the nation. It is, after all, only in their nature to yield meekly to the captors. Whatever skills these scum may possess are but a drop in the ocean compared to the depth of their sins. Public executions have been arranged in every city that currently lies under UPA controls to demonstrate to all that the heavy price of turning your back on your countrymen. The worst part goes down. I've got for 60 days. Uh, that is next, my friends. Good, there you go. Get around them. Oh, just, just kill them straight out. Now oh, go, go get the radar station. Nice. Oh, well, darn it. Oh. Well, go to Duncan Ramparts, as well as the Cauldrons of Blood and Steel. Please go ahead. The second struggle avenged. Actually, we lose defense and organization, huh? That sucks. You get way more daily political power. The atrophied Azdaya to kill a hero next. After a long, hard campaign in the western fringes of Ukraine, the so-called UNRA lies vanquished before us. Their feeble Republican government has been scattered to the wind, marking a new chapter in the quest for a free and independent Ukraine. The one shaped by a patriotic band the right thought, rather than the milk toast republicanism espoused by the guard and their puppeteers. All that remains is to march to the aid of our brethren to the east, who still languish under the rule of tyrants. The final step to unification is at hand, and the destiny of Ukraine hangs in the balance. The struggle shall not end until victory is ours, no matter how many must give their lives in the name of liberation. Nourishing their bodies. And enriching their minds. Swallow the ironworks. Ooh. Forming industrial battalions. Well, swallow the ironworks. As we have retaken more of Ukraine, we have also retaken resources and industrial potential and restored some of the supply and input lines cut in the conflict's outbreak. This does not, however, mean that we're immediately operational again and it will take work to restore dominant factories to operation. Work that will be, shall be, carried out. The fight is not yet over and we must have more war material to support the fronts that are still active. It will benefit to all to see the great foundries open once again and to kill a hero. Ah, please move in fast, fast, fast. Underlay. The head of the snake, leader of the UNRA, Yuri Horlis, had finally fallen in, into the UPA's hands. His end would further fracture the liberal forces and cement the dominance of the Banderite movement over the nation. Into the forest, they led him and forced him out of the ground. The executioner looked into Yuri's eyes as he looked back, as he looked back, unshaken by his imminent doom. There was a mutual understanding between the two. Yuri was too important to be treated as if he was worth a proper execution in front of a traumatized crowd. He would be a martyr, and his courage would humil humiliate the UPA. And so in a quick, cold, and calculated decision, Yuri was shot before a word could be said, his body thrown into an unmarked grave left to rot in the forest unnoticed. And so the legend ends with a bang and a whimper. If you'd like to be about this uh, supply issue of supreme priority, please go right ahead.
or you must take action eventually. Well, we're not fighting in a two-front war, but still. Oh, we have Kiev too. Look at that. That is nice. Forming industrial battalions and enriching their minds. For the most part, the UPA's ultimate objectives are simple enough to understand. We seek only the total liberation of Ukraine from foreign oppressors and traitors alike, and to avenge the decades of injustices inflicted upon our people. There are those, however, who doubt our sincerity, though whose mind have been clouded by a vast web of lies spun by our many enemies, murderers, rapists, barbarians, all these hy hyperbolic words, and more used to decry just cause, and if action is not taken, the people may begin to be seduced by the slanderous accusations. And an education program shall be started to espouse the virtues of the UPA and make our countrymen understand that we come as liberators, not conquerors. Victory may only be achieved when the hearts of the nation beat as one, and when everyone from the highest ranking in general to the lowliest peasant is able to stand in common cause. Yep. That's something we must do here. Do not let up, for they all must die here. The Factory of Damocles. Ivan, the UPA's new foreman of Vinitsia Heavy Appliances, stared out through his office window towards the lines of workers humming away at their stations. He held a glass of German wine to his lips and drank deeply. As the wine fell into his stomach, he cursed the commander who had named him the foreman. How could the man seen Ivan as fit for the cause? Ooh, this is not ideal, is it? The cloud hanging over Ivan's factory was one of expertise. The UPA had appointed him based on experience. But experience meant nothing to a factory line. Before the UPA came, Ivan was merely a slave to the Germans, knowingly, knowing only one of his single station. The true knowledge of this factory laid on the brains of the engineers and foremen, pushed in front of a firing squad, and then splattered on the southward wall. In other words, if anything in this factory broke, Ivan had no answers. For now, Ivan was a hero to the UPA. But if the factory faced an accident, if the machine broke down, even if the electricity went out, Ivan would no longer be viewed so kindly. He would be investigated for treason, mismanagement, and conspiracy against this nation, and really that could only end one way. Ivan had tried to convince himself a better outcome was possible. Maybe a promotion could come faster than an accident. Maybe Ivan would find enough time to escape, but either relied on the factory running smoothly for even a month or so, and Aryan factories relied on a certain level of Ukrainian expendability. Ivan tasted the wine on his lips. If this was to be his last drink, he had to pick a fine wine to go out on. He spent the rest of his days finishing the bottle and nourishing the bodies. Ukraine was one of the most, once of the most fertile lands in all of Eurasia, her endless fields of grain serving as the breadbasket for nations of the world over. Those days, regrettably, are long over. Sucked dry by the Soviet and Nazi machines and scorched away by the war that now ravages our homeland, the people of Ukraine have been left with very little to keep their bellies full. While their own forces, too, are struggling to find sustenance each day, it would be a severe dereliction of our duties to Ukraine to let the people starve. Our already meager rations will be, will be cut even further to provide some relief, fleeting as it may be, to the people. Now this act of kindness serves as another reminder of the UPA's benevolence and its commitment to Ukraine's well-being. There you go. I know we're generous here. Very generous. We just have to absolutely crush the Germans here. And then all the comments to deal with, but still. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Happy March, everybody. I'm not like extremely worried, just a little worried, that's all. Uh -oh. And now we've met the communists. better. It's not good. Ah, there we go. I need you to hold and reassess your lines and hold, hold, hold everything you've got right now. All lined up, bodies piled upon bodies, bureaucrats, collaborators, and every other piece of scum that the Reich used to destroy Ukraine face their just punishment. They spent their last months roasting on a pyre, singing a choking song, sucked into the dirt in a pool of crimson or facing a land of rifles. Each method was soundtrack to a medley of once forgotten Ukrainian music, a celebration for reclaiming what was theirs. 
Shuhevich. Shukovich. Today I was one of the countless revelers, taking his rifle to a righteous slaughter with his comrades as part of the firing squad, each one. Other German dogs faced him, and he carefully picked his target, a Melniak lackey whose luxury came from the oppression of his very own people. He readied his rifle the dog set before a call to open fire was given, painting the wall behind him with gray matter. He and the rest of the vermin collapsed onto the earth, soon to be taken away and burnt. Shukovich took a breath from his revels, one of the ones that was interrupted when an adjutant brought him a special prize, Deputy Rex Commissar Jörg Lebrunt. The crestfallen academic kneeled before him, bloody and broken. He dismissed his aide before he got lost in the thought. Once, he was in the same position as the man who just killed him. In another life, he could have stayed with the 201st Schutzmannschaft's battalion. Maybe he would have been one of the Ukrainians who had stood up against the wall. Do the others still know of that past? His thoughts were interrupted by the babbling of a bureaucrat. You know, we have a lot in common, granted. I would have gone about independence differently, but there are many in Germany like me. If you keep, if you people keep me alive, I can help negotiate. Lebrun's useless words were silenced with a bullet through his temple. Alongside the Patriots' concerns regarding his collaboration, and Shukhevich felt pretty good for making the social order. Every villager was back into the crowd in town square. They had been summoned to hear a speech from the UPA official assigned to overlook the newly conquered town. Some of the crowd looked on in curiosity, others frightened and disinterested. The mass smoke of the insurgent army power, its ability to bring strength and security to Ukrainians free from the boot of the Nazis and the tyranny of the communists and the disorder of the liberals. Many in the crowd, while forced to be there, took an interest in what the man was saying. He rambled on for some time, more and more of the crowd being hypnotized by his words. None of what he said seemed particularly controversial. And it felt natural as the man eventually started ranting about the superiority of Ukrainian blood and the need to rid the country of inferior elements. Some townsfolk exchanged worried glances. While well, he continued to watch, as the speech continued, the UPA leader called for a show of solidarity, and the crowd began to chant Slava Ukraina in unison. Some looked on in horror as friends and neighbors embraced the rhetoric of their former occupiers. Others felt glee in knowing that now it would be the Ukrainians who would be put first. But to those that did not match the idealized image of a pure Ukrainian man, they should have the prospect of the Nazi ideology out long outlasting as German creators. New boss, same as the old boss, foster Bandrite virtues. Rebuild the past. More souls for the slag. Every man a soldier. Weekly manpower plus a thousand. I definitely prefer this one. But every man is soldier, but former district battalions. Years of occupation and collaborative schooling has unfortunately left few of our countrymen with anything that could be considered technical skills. We must therefore find ways to remedy this if we are to expand our expert workforce, and a proposal has been received. Those few engineers we do have will be given officer ranks and positions in command of work for workers' battalions, tasked with skills transfer. It will be an agonizingly slow process, yes, but it will in time serve to grow a technical workforce. Alright, so they're not moving, which is not good for us. We are just here to help hold the line for now. That's all I want to do is hold the line. And if they want to be a bunch of rat guys to us, then so be it. We need this factory back. Or this tile back, really. Yeah, they have a lot of militia as well as these commies, so... Holding out here should be okay. We just gotta be careful with how we do everything here. Just have to be a little careful. Because they still have quite a few divisions and manpower, of course. Hope they spread out a little bit more. Hmm, wow. Interesting. What do we have here? Can you do that, perhaps? Can you guys keep these guys in place? Catastrophic loss. Well, that's not good. If you're gonna do a bit of that, please go ahead. At this point, we might just be able to do this anyways. God dang. Seriously? Oh, wait, what? Wait, why did we lose? Wait, why did we lose? We were doing really well. Um. Krieg in. Oh, did they do something here? Doppeldanken? Oh, yeah, what? Why did we just get taken over? Uh, let me go take a look at this and see 
What's wrong with all this? All right, everyone. So I'm not sure why we just get auto annexed by the Ukrainian uh, communist state. So I use cons commands and just straight up annex them because at this point, like, I, I don't care. Like, this, that's really dumb that we get annexed by them completely. It makes no sense. But it is what it is. Um, no, whatever. I mean, we're going to win in the end, when, end anyways. But reclaim Ukraine, Crimea. After countless battles and years of struggle, finally we stand on the precipice of victory. The communists have been decapitated, dispersed, and driven back into the forests and wilds, unable to mount attacks. The Germans and the collaborators have been almost entirely vanquished, but the fight is not yet over. Crimea still stands as an odious passion of German influence, and this cannot stand. We will push forward and drown the Teutonic scourge in the sea. And that should be done. Oh, oh, it's fired again. God help us, it's over. Well, I mean, the war's over now. I mean, happy April. Hopefully the game doesn't crash again for me, because it's crashed three times between the fade-in and fade-out, so... Oh, God, it's annoying. Oh. There you go. That's more like it. Um. Alright. And then Bandera Triumphant. For the first time in many, many years, uh, Ukraine is free of communists, of Germans, of all those who would see it shackled, oppressed, and trampled underfoot. Ukraine stands triumphant over its foes and stands even stronger as a free nation for the Ukrainian people. The victory was near eternity in the making, and though Bandera is not here to see it, he surely smiles down from the heavens upon us and upon the fulfillment of our and his lifelong dream. Slava Ukraini. After 20 years of humiliation and failure, the organization of Ukrainian nationals has triumphed. So the game is bugged, apparently, because it just keeps wanting to do this, but we don't have this. So... Dmitro Klechkivsky, a Provnik of the National Revolution. A lot of more political power gain. That's pretty nice, actually. Division tax, pretty good. Requiem Bells. It is my opinion, friends, that our crusade is not yet complete. Not in the slightest. We may have liberated our nation from the Teutonic yoke, crushed the Bolsheviks, and seen our flag rise from the dawn to the Volun, but we have yet to see truly all of Ukraine come out from under the foreign boot. It remains press upon our necks as we cast a weary eyes towards Germany, as we watch people cower before the thought of their bombs, as we pray for mercy for from the foreign uh, enemy. The Yaroslav. Stesko set at rapt attention, faces and knuckles pale. This was it. There was no turning back. You know this was coming deep down. You remember the furious campsite declarations, the frenzied murmurings, even foggily remembering those maps on the peel of faded propaganda posters displayed on forgotten town billboards and what they promised. Who are they, those traitors, those backbiters, those doubters? Why, he said some, some said among us. Stesko stared ahead, his face turning almost yellow. Dear God, just utter the words and end this darn experiment. Perhaps the Germans would make his death short. We march soon, our armies are ready. The blood of our people cries out for justice for those who so unjustly spilled it. The honor and sanctity of Ukraine will never be preserved unless we go south to reclaim our peninsula. The national flag shall fly above Sevastopol. They all cheered as Dmitro Klyachkivsky sank to his, to his seat, his face emotionless. The bell hath tolled. Oh, it's pretty ballsy that they're actually attacking us, too. Look at that. So this should not be firing at all. Good. Yeah, it's just, it's just bugged. It, it refuses to fix. Does this happen to you guys? This is very annoying. Total victory, total and unquestionable. All of them been wrong. All of them had doubted him. All of them lacked ambition, drive, and true patriotism. Only Dmitro Klyavchevsky would go down in history as a liberator of the Crimea. As March through the festival, remembered just as Scipio's triumph, only he had truly achieved Bender's dream. The streets of the city lay in ruins. The rubble stood where once the Teutonic monoliths had clouded the skies, while mud permeated where some sumptuous. Deccan and Parks once ambled along. Shukevich stared blankly at it all. We won only a few years ago. We thought the day would never come. Klyachkivsky slapped Shuk, uh, Shukevich on the back, nearly knocking him off balance. I suppose, he said blankly. He supposed, Klyachkivsky sighed, chuckling slightly. There's still Germans here in the countryside. We haven't cleared out all the garrisons yet, and the Tartars aren't pleased. I've already heard reports of insurrection in the Yalu. And they shall be crushed, Klyachkivsky snapped, his predatory grin fading slightly. They have been nothing here anymore. Their states will be parceled out, and some of the soldiers have already brought their families, and the Tartars will be bought off with some of them as well. The garrisons will wither. You worry too much. Klyachkivsky... Turned her gazing out of the harbor. At least he had come, unlike Stetsko. Stetsko was too busy whimpering in key. They knew not a victory, even when standing amidst it. And Stetsko's gambit. 
The honor's like a sense. Desco sputtered as he stumbled around his office, gathering paper for his typewriter. The usually composed man had become fraught with nervous meltdowns since Klyavchevsky had ordered the assault on Crimea, and his victory had only driven this visionary further into erratic fervor. As luck of a show will certainly get us all killed, Robert added. Stress did not treat the man kindly as sweat drenched his bald head with an anxious sheen. If the boss is going to act like a rabid animal, then he should be put down, Lebed coldly added with a sneer. It's becoming harder to hide my tracks. Soon enough, we'll have our heads. Which is precisely why I've summoned both of you here, Stetsko exclaimed as he began to type furiously. There'll be no peace and no Ukraine should we sit idly and let a false destiny claim our lives. The typewriter's rapid clicks filled the silence as Stetsko's voice began to crescendo. Only two paths lie before us, one to an early grave and the other one to a glorious future. Just as Bandera challenged Melnik's wicked corruption, so too must we purge our ranks of a boss whose ambitions betray our ideals. Sesco removed the page from the tapper and handed it to Rabette, delivered this to Mivsky without delay. And what would you have me do? Lebet inquired. Monitor our dear boss. I trust you know what to do when the opportunity arises. Sesco spun with a sardonic grin, and thus Mephisto began his waltz. So I'm going to end it there and see if there's anything else we can do about this whole little bug thing right now. But if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow to see if we can actually do anything. Um without having this completely bugged, but there's no guarantee. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.